Hi there. In this lecture, we see Alpha Zero again, Stockfish 8 in 2018, computer match. So we have an opening book from TSEC, Top Chess Engines Competition. And it's actually a Queen's game it declined. And actually, a Slav defense accepted. So the bishop isn't locked in with e6. We have d takes c4 here. a4, we're still in book. Book move e4, bishop g4. So the bishop is outside of the black pawn chain. Bishop takes c4, e6. Bishop e3, knight b4. And now this is the first move out of book rook c1. So it's an interesting start position. We have knight d7, white castles, bishop d6, h3. And now the move bishop takes f3. So if bishop h5, white can actually kind of do a, rule, a kind of principal violation g4. You shouldn't normally move pawns around the king, but it might be justified here because of d5. So this position, for example, white's opening up that light square bishop, it's slightly better placed in many respects than the g6 bishop. So this position, we've also got central pressure and both bishops working together here. This is an advantage for white. With the queens off, white's king safety is less of an issue. So in fact, black is compelled to play rook fb8. And here, we can nudge the knight actually and then let's say bishop takes b4 this is just one example we can get a rook to the seventh rank which is the strategic dream the career path of the rooks is often to get to that seventh rank with juicy targets so here white actually ends up being significantly better and the other rook can replace that rook if needed on the seventh rank so white would have a certain advantage here a clear positional advantage here overall pressure on f7 and incoming ideas based on the rook on the seventh rank black's pretty tied down here so back to the game bishop takes f3 was played instead of bishop h5 queen takes f3 black castles bishop b3 king h8 so we have a light square bishop without a counterpart which can be really dangerous Queen e2, a5, f4. So there's a structural plan leaving the rook on f1 supports f5 to try and liberate the bishop. Bishop c7 and now e5. So this makes sure there's no e5 reaction from black. So we're still going to play for f5. g6 trying to dissuade f5, discourage it. But now knight e4. Well, it's getting a really nice position here. Knight g5, knight b6. Okay, black has the d5 square to play with at least. Rook f3, the knight from 6 goes to d5. Bishop d2, maintaining the bishop pair. And here, queen f2, the queen supports d4. Queen d7, and now rook e1. Bishop d8, knight e4, b6. We have now g4, so white still wanting to play for f5. Really interesting position. This would break open the bishop on the diagonal. We have black playing f5. If bishop e7, rook e2, f5, we can take on f6. And here king h1, this position, we're building up a really good position. For example, knight g5 targeting e6. And black's going to have to give up the dark square bishop. This is just an immense position. We can even take on d5 here to help our cause and potentially play now d5 so this position with d5 and then queen d4 and all of a sudden this diagonal is really interesting for white so this position it's going to be in white's favor whatever happens this is going in white's favor so these are really interesting things if bishop e7 just ignoring white's f5 white's going to be playing f5 so this situation is building up for f5 yeah black really needs to play f5 at some point so f5 was just played immediately we have e takes f6 bishop takes f6 knight takes f6 rook takes f6 queen e2 so the queen wants to come to the e5 square now rook a f8 queen e5 now normally the queen's not a great blockader but here it's pinning the rook in this case blockading e6 but also that's a fantastic position here Queen g7, rook f1, rook 6 to f7, king h2. We have queen takes e5, d takes, and now king g7. So black actually doesn't have any particular threat here. White plays h4 as if maybe there's a concern about 
g5 that's not actually the case king g3 this position is fine for white white's going to play for f5 king g2 can be played you know g5 is no problem f5 and there's no problem here white's going to get a very dominating position g5 is a target so h4 though is it's a really interesting move we have knight a6 bishop c2 knight c5 and now f5 g takes f5 so if king h8 we have bishop h6 nudging that rook and then f takes is actually rather good for white getting a rook on the seventh rank is an achievement strategically and the rook's really quite good they're restricting the king so this scenario is really good and there's king safety issues emerging here for example bishop b1 for h6 coming up and that pawn is queening so danger points so g takes f5 we have g takes f5 e takes and now critical moments what would you play here for 100 points and why so this is really interesting accuracy as well we've got the bishop pair against the knight pair very interesting material imbalance okay it's actually rook g1 check bishop takes f5 is only equal on knight e7 say check this position knight g6 and here let's say bishop takes g6 h takes this position it fizzles to equality basically uh, potentially it's just just going to be uh, equal here so okay so rook g1 is much more accurate we have king h8 bishop h6 rook g8 pair of rooks comes off and now what would you play here how to take on f5 for 100 points yeah we want to take with the bishop we want to take the bishop if we take with the rook this isn't accurate really black could actually be equal here for example like this uh, the problem is knight e5 in this scenario the knights just in time actually stop things so this this knight could take and then take the bishop so the, the pause pawns like halted you know this is bad for for white so what does white do here white has to play bishop d6 and it's just a repetition draw actually so fascinating so bishop takes f5 is the accurate way to play it so we have king h8 if knight takes a4 we have a weakness of the last move to celebrate we can play bishop e6 the knight's neglected e6 we just pounce into e6 pinning that rook and here check and this is just absolutely crushing so king h8 we have king g3 knight e7 so if knight takes a4 e6 is strong and this position bishop g5 e7 bishop e6 and we're going to be checkmating the black king for example as example so it's a very dangerous scenario so knight e7 is tried we have bishop c2 pair of the rooks comes comes off and now knight g6 so has white miscalculated this because isn't this a double attack on two pawns and white really doesn't want to give up this bishop because what what, what would be defending pardon me what would be defending a4 after so a tricky situation and this reminds me a bit of a capablanca pawn sacrifice to really improve the king so what would you play here for 200 points really great stuff now with white's king we don't have a form pawn but we have a kind of fawny bishop stopping the black king from being that active in this end game we have king g4 yeah sacrificing e5 now if bishop f4 yeah black would just take on h4 and this would be just even the resulting situation here is just even say like this so it doesn't matter about two bishops versus the two knights here black's doing fine so king g4 is the problem for black the white king believe it or not wants to march and potentially take out a5 to create a past outside pawn if that plan can be inflicted then the knights are going to struggle against outside past pawns knights are notoriously bad in end games where there's outside past pawn potential because they have to hop around the board trying to stop them so here we have knight takes e5 check if knight e7 
it runs into bishop f8 nasty skewer if we can take out c5 this is absolutely a winning position even if the bishop drops here e6 and this position the knight's going to have to sack itself the resulting king and pawn ending is trivially a win for white we're much faster with our pawn queening so okay we have knight takes e5 check king f5 knight ed3 if knight f7 we can play bishop e3 in this situation bishop d4 check bishop takes c5 and king e6 and we get a magnificent position here winning advantage so knight ed3 b3 we have knight b4 bishop d1 king g8 and now king e5 the king is making progress there isn't a total wall here for the white king the white king can cross and does cross now magnificently check king c7 b5 king b6 why it's trying to get that a pawn to create an outside pass pawn to make it super difficult for the knights so king e7 we have bishop f3 knight d6 king takes a5 knight d5 king a6 king d7 bishop f8 knight f4 king b6 knight c4 check king b7 knight a5 check king b8 knight d5 bishop e4 and now white wants to stretch black's resources out by getting another passed pawn it's the principle of two weaknesses in effect trying to stretch out the black resources beautiful stuff what an end game two bishops versus two knights in balance what a magnificent example we have king e6 if h5 bishop g6 knight b6 and we can see this this situation with bishop b4 is important because then we retain the a pawn and then that's overwhelming for black that a pawn here is overwhelming because this this position we have the right color bishop for queening this pawn later so this is absolutely a winning position because we've got that bishop we're going to just eventually win h5 through zugzwang and then queen that h pawn okay so if the bishop wasn't if it was a light square that would be different it would be a draw you know the, the king could just bury itself in the corner and it'd be a draw but that's winning so king e6 is played and after bishop takes h7 the operators for stockfish resigned if king f7 bishop c5 so we have these beautiful outside pass pawns really painful for these two knights so this scenario is just a dream come true for the bishop pair because the knights are being overstretched overwhelmed there's just too much for the knights to do here on both sides of the board it's quite an emphatic situation to demonstrate the struggle the struggle of the knights bishop h5 check for example here so if it takes we're just queening with h7 is a nice trick so king h7 and then bishop e8 is putting the knights over the edge for example here the knights are over the edge check and that's it so yes the end of the game officially at move 60 bishop takes h7 so magnificent use of the bishop here in this end game creating these outside pass pawns with the king really aggressive king walk in the end game i think capablanca would be proud about this game really some really instructive points are made by this instructive game in my view okay hope you enjoyed it as much as me thanks very much All comments, questions, likes and subscribes, really appreciated. Thanks so much.